May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And everyone that liveth and believeth in me shall not die forever. John chapter 11, these are the beautiful words said by our Saviour of the world, Jesus Christ, to the feast of Saint today of Saint Martha. Saint Martha, in God's providence, we see and in the church gives us last week, exactly one week ago, the feast of Saint Mary Magdalene. Tradition holds that Saint Martha is the sister of Saint Mary Magdalene, with also the brother Lazarus. This is the beautiful scripture reading we have today. We unpack this mystery of Martha and Mary. Jesus Christ then had three friends, two of these sisters and their brother, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. They lived not far from the city of Jerusalem in a town called Bethany. Jesus was their friend and today their guest in the scripture. Jesus loved these three and found warmth and comfort to go to their home and visit. Remember how much the Lord loved this family and he wept at the death of Lazarus. The Lord makes a visit to the home where Mary sits in silence at the feet of the Lord. This is interesting. We always see Mary Magdalene at the feet of Jesus. Today also, She's at the feet of Jesus. We spread last week, anointing his feet in the house of Simon the Pharisee. And also the mystics tell us that Magdalene is the one who stays at the feet of Jesus when he's taken down from the cross, when Our Lady is the one who anoints the body. Mary sits in silence while Martha, the saint of today, becomes busy with much serving. By nature, Mary then was more the contemplative. This means Mary thrived on silence, reflection, and contemplation. On the contrary, Martha was then, we can say, a ball of energy. Very active by nature, Martha liked to get things done. She was, we can say, a planner and an organizer, a homemaker and a cook. She liked to turn out things according to her plans and her designs and schedules. Despite the many tasks that were incomplete, her sister Mary was simply sitting before Jesus, apparently, according to her, doing nothing. Or at least Mary was not doing anything very profitable. Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, even though much had to be done. What was left undone? Things were not ready according to the criteria of Martha then, and this was wrong, and this had to be remedied as soon as possible. Martha, the pragmatist and the doer, had a simple but what she thought a very efficient idea. This is one of the sayings in the world. We say that two hands are better than one, or another proverb, many hands make light work. Therefore, what does Martha do then? In the beautiful scripture, she complains to Jesus Christ. She complains what Martha thought was a justified complaint. In any case, the complaint was directed at having things quicker ready for the Lord. So Martha tells Jesus then to ask Mary to help her. This seems a, a fair and logical request, well-ordered and reasonable, but what does the Lord of hosts say? He gives her a beautiful, simple, and gentle rebuke. Instead of Jesus telling Mary to get up in a hurry to help Martha so everything could run according to schedule and according to Martha's criteria, Jesus says these beautiful words in the gospel to Martha. Martha, Martha, you are worried about many things. Mary has chosen the best part and she will not be deprived of it. 
magnificent words. Jesus then was not displeased at the tension of concern, hospitality, and the hard work of Martha towards him. Even on another occasion, when Jesus came to raise Lazarus from the dead, Martha, as soon as she was told he was on his way, what did she do again in this activism? She was eager and ran to meet him, while Mary stayed in the house and waited quietly. She did not go out until her sister told her that the master was calling for her. Martha acted as her own inclination prompted her at once, but Mary waited to act until Jesus Christ himself guided her actions. But never forget, we seem to be harsh sometimes on Martha, the saint of today, but she is a great saint of the church. Celebrated each year this day, July the 29th, and she is the one who in scripture makes this revelation of Jesus Christ at the death of Nazareth. Jesus Christ, I am the resurrection of the life, Jesus Christ says to her, and, Mary, and Martha responds and says that you are the Christ, the son of the living God who has come into the world. The point that Jesus wants to highlight in the passage of the gospel today is the importance of prayer life, the importance of silence which fosters contemplation and above all a union with Jesus Christ our Lord. This is our goal in our life. We have three stages of spiritual life called purgation, illumination, and finally, what we all should seek, union with God. Martha symbolizes the active life of service to others, if you like, the corporal works of mercy, such as I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a foreigner and you welcomed me. Indeed then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we will also be judged how faithfully we have lived out these works of mercy, but remember the spiritual life is first. The life of contemplation has the supremely important role. It was precisely this that Jesus is trying to teach the world through this incident today in Bethany and the tension that existed between Martha and Mary, two very good and holy sisters, but with very different temperaments, characters, and behavior. Mary symbolizes all the different gestures we should strive to implement so as to live out a more contemplative lifestyle. Ponder then well the gestures of Mary, Mary Magdalene. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, Contemplative souls long to sit and be with Jesus for long periods of time, especially in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Was this not the constant position of Magdalene, always in the gospel at the feet of Jesus, also in great love and humility? Mary simply gazed into the face and the eyes of the Lord Jesus. The psalmist expresses this. Look to the Lord and be radiant with joy. While sitting in front of Mary, we can certainly imagine Jesus speaking to Mary. We must imitate her and ask the Blessed Virgin Mary then, today, for this magnificent gift of contemplation. Why? Because this is the way to love the Lord with more intensity and thus to save more souls. Imagine the dialogue between our Lord and Mary in Bethany. This is the essence of prayer then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to listen and speak to Jesus, a great definition of prayer. The essence of this encounter between Mary and Jesus in the house of Bethany was then in fact based on charity and love. Mary loved Jesus totally and Jesus in turn loved Mary, as well as Martha and Lazarus. One of the reasons we fall, being we call headless chickens today and going nowhere fast in our spiritual life, is that we easily neglect 
the contemplative dimension of our lives. What do we see today? This push always for this activism. They say in the world now, go out into the margins and help the poor. Go to the fringes of society. But what is the point of doing this if you do not focus, first of all, on your own personal holiness? This is, we have the seven spiritual works of mercy. Perhaps the first spiritual work of mercy has to be to yourself to cultivate your own holiness and then go out into the fringes to the poor. We can easily fall then today into this activism. We can fall into the proverbial modern, modern malady that we call the workaholic. We can fall into the trap of doing our own will. The occupation of Martha then was all exterior, all action. That of Mary in country was all interior, silence and repose. The one wished to give to our Savior, the other wished to receive from him. Martha wished to give and Mary wished to receive. Martha presented him with all that she had with a generous heart, but Mary gave her whole self. Therefore, when you find yourself nervous, tense, emotionally drained, frenetically moving from one activity to the next in your daily life like a robot, in a word, you are all stressed out and bent out of shape, you will know the reason why you have become too much like Martha and not enough Mary. Why not beg then today the Blessed Virgin Mary, the model of all contemplatives, for the grace to strike a harmonious, harmonious blend between the Martha and Mary in your life, the harmonious integration of a deep prayer life and zealous life of fraternal charity for the salvation of all souls. Remember that Martha must have also been taken in and reflecting on the behavior of her sister because she also became a great saint. We all need models to gaze upon. So remember this hierarchy of charity. You must look after your soul first and be holy. Seek the gift of contemplation to block out especially the noise of this wicked world. Gaze at the Lord at the foot of the cross through the immaculate corridemptrix soaked in blood, hanging on a tree of life for our sins, hanging in anticipation for, the, for our conversion from our wicked ways and hanging the Lord Jesus Christ in desperation, in bitter agony for the sanctification of the whole human race. Let us make our own the words of St. Martha when she saw the Lord Jesus Christ as he really is today. Yes, Lord, I have believed that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, who has come into the world. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.